Hey, I'm Zach with Bella Lash, and this is Hayden. I'm Hayden. Um, we are here today to kind of discuss some really cool chemistry and kind of talk about a little bit about the history of eyelash extension adhesives, how far they've come, and what the future is of the chemistry. So, um, with that, we have kind of some some chemicals behind us that are, that we use to to formulate adhesives and that are in some of the current adhesives. Actually, some of these are definitely not in the adhesives that you're using today, but. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about why we use some of the ingredients that we use. Um, so with that, um, eyelash extensions have come a long ways. I think Bell Lash has been in business for about 12 or 13 years now, and I've just seen some remarkable advances in the chemistry behind the adhesives that have allowed lash artists to go faster, for the lashes to last longer, and um, just more forgiving, better shelf life, just everything about Lower adhesive. sensitivity. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So many things. So um, we're really excited um, because we feel like we've kind of maxed out the possibilities of the chemistry behind eyelash extension adhesives with the current chemistry set that, that everybody's been using, that the industry's been using. Um, the reason we say that is, is that we can only make it so good with, with the tools that we're using and the chemistry that we're using. Um, and to progress beyond that, we really kind of need to change the game a little bit. And that's exactly what we've done with, with the new titanium adhesive. So we're going to talk a little bit about what's been done in the past. And, and then we'll talk a little bit about how the new one is made and why that's so different. So we have with us here kind of some of the core ingredients. Now there's, there's a lot of ingredients that go on, uh, that go into making eyelash extension adhesives. Um, but these are kind of the main, the main drivers. First and foremost, we have the ethyl 2 cyanoacrylate. That's kind of like the base um, polymer behind, like that's your workhorse. That's, that's the that, adhesive, yeah. That's what's doing the work, right? Yep. That's what's totally. binding to the keratin so well in your natural lashes. It also binds to the plastic fibers in the lash extensions really well. So this is really important. This on its own though is not the right viscosity. It's not the right color. We can't really use it on its own. We have to make some changes to it. And we do that with some of these other ingredients. Um, we, first of all, we can talk about adhesive, or excuse me, the viscosity. The easiest thing to adjust the viscosity with is PMMA. PMMA is basically these round plastic beads, um, and we can, we can pour these in this beaker, and you can kind of see it looks a lot like sugar, okay? So I'll show the camera over here. It's just a lot like sugar. Now, this, when it gets melted down into solution, you can make it really thick or you can, you can, um, it can be thin, just kind of depending on how you do it. However, if I were to dump this PMMA directly into the ethyl 2 cyanoacrylate, it will not go into solution, meaning it will not be one cohesive liquid. Think oil and water. Yeah. It won't mix. Yep, won't mix. So in order to get it to mix, we have to put this into, we have to use a solvent to get the PMMA into solution, and then we can pour that new solution into the ethyl 2 cyanoacrylate. So um, some of the solvents that are used, uh, there's, there's a lot of side effects that come with those. Um, probably the most famous uh, solvent that is illegal to use is toluene, which we have here. Um, it's definitely illegal in the US. I think it's illegal as far as every country is concerned for cosmetics. For cosmetics. It's a very harsh solvent, and with that solvent comes sensitivities and some bad things happen. Now, some solvents are worse than others, um, but this is kind of the one where if you're not using a reputable brand, and even some reputable brands that don't have like the engineering and chemistry backgrounds, they will find themselves buying um, adhesives from China with toluene in them, whether they mean to or not. It's very easy to just delete toluene, that. Toluene creates a shortcut. It's easy for the manufacturer to use toluene and make it really easy for them to produce adhesives. And the results are actually pretty good. Uh, yeah. It's really hard the... to achieve the same results without toluene. Yeah. So, um, but it's very easy to just delete that off the ingredient deck. It doesn't get checked very often. However, if we use a mass spectrometer to check a lot of our competitor stuff, like, believe it or not, there's actually toluene in a lot of them. Um, anyways, though, we're going to use a solvent and we're going to put uh, this PMMA into solution and so that you can see it. If you want to uh, come over here and see this. So we're, we're taking our PMMA. We have a solvent. We're going to drop it in and then we'll turn up the mixture on it. And given a little bit of time, a little bit of heat, we'll get that to mix into solution just fine. So um, this solvent solution that we have now, um, after it's mixed thoroughly, could then be put into our ethyl 2 cyanoacrylate, and we can adjust the viscosity of our formulation with that. The next thing that we want to talk about is carbon black. 
Carbon black um, is just used to make the adhesive black. We, we want our adhesives black. They tend to look better. Um, and so that's it's pretty important. There's multiple types of carbon black, but carbon black gets a bad name because of the harsh solvents that are required to put it into solution. Um, that's where a lot of the irritations from eyelash extension adhesives are coming from are these solvents. So um, if you were to just pour this carbon black into the ethyl 2 cyanoacrylate, you'll just, it, it won't go into solution at all. It'll look chunky. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not like one cohesive homogeneous mixture. So we need to use a different solvent to put the carbon black in. Um, for the purposes of this though, we're just gonna use the same here and you can kind of get the sense. Now this carbon black is actually harmless. I mean, our bodies are primarily carbon. Um, carbon black's actually used in food dyes. So it's even we eat it. ingestible. Yeah. Um, again though, the, the challenge with carbon black is getting into solution. Uh, for the adhesive. So it's those solvents that are giving us a lot of the, the negative side effects. So if I were to pour some of this in here, I don't need to do the whole thing. And we give that a little bit more time. Uh, that's going to require more time than what the PMMA did and a little bit more heat. Um, that will eventually go into solution with that. And then we can take that mixture and put it into our cyanoacrylate and we can start to get an adhesive that would be usable. Now this is just for illustration purposes. This is not, we're not going to create any form of decent adhesive with this, but um, <laughs> we're just trying to like show, show where we're at. So these are kind of the building blocks. These are the, the ingredients that we get to play with. Some of the ingredients that we, we get to play with to create eyelash extension adhesives. We can, we can adjust things up or down to get different things. But with that also sometimes comes negative side effects. Um, and that's where we kind of feel like we have maxed out the chemistry for today's eyelash extension adhesives. It's really hard to get beyond where we're at right now with these ingredients. Um, with what we are launching now, with the titanium adhesive, um, we, we basically get to take the most important parts of the adhesive and get rid of everything else. So it's almost like a unicorn. We get to just use our ethyl 2 cyanoacrylate. It's a naturally derived ethyl 2 cyanoacrylate. And it's a different type of carbon black that doesn't have or require solvents to go into solution. And what makes it so special is that it just so happens that the ethyl 2 cyanoacrylate combined with the carbon black is the perfect viscosity. So we don't have any of the negative side effects from the solvents. And we don't get our, like, one of the things that can slow down the, uh, the cross polymerization of the old adhesive is the PMMA. PMMA is, it actually will slow down the reaction time. So it's, it's just not a part of this polymer, and those chains are kind of just, like, they're prohibited from cross-linking as much if they have the PMMA in it. So we really have, uh, we've, we've, We've worked hard and we've worked like with some, some awesome partners to help us develop this, this new adhesive system. It's a unicorn. Um, basically, the, the, main, the main points of it, I would say, are how, how amazing it bonds, how quick it bonds, and how hard it bites into the keratin fibers. Like It does a phenomenal job. Clients come back with better retention than ever, with more lashes than ever. Um, and when they open their eyes, they're always shocked because it's like, oh my gosh, there's, there's not a lot of fumes here. Now, if you are allergic to some of these like cyanoacrylates, you may still have an allergic reaction to this. It's not like no one's going to have an allergic reaction to this. However, the majority of the allergic reactions happen to be with the solvents. And since we have none of those solvents in this mixture, it's opening up a whole new field for us. So this is the first adhesive that we're launching with this technology. It's incredible. Lash artists that have been a part of this development process have been stoked. Um, when we tell them about kind of the chemistry behind it and how revolutionary it is, it gets everybody more excited because it's just opening up more doors for what we can do in the future. So, yeah. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate you guys, and we hope that you learned something.